right. <clears throat> First week, day two, and this is version B, believe it or not. Friday. This is Net 200, Introduction to Networking. That's later on. We reviewed some course details, talked a little more about Explore Networks. We did not do any packet tracer testing, but we did take the pretest. Talked a little bit about their work. Talked about protocols, rules of communication. And you heard terms like um, TCP, IP, causes the internet to work, if you want to be real general. Ethernet, Ethernet, we talked a little bit about that, kind of difference between either connecting by wire or Wi-Fi, and a whole chapter on that, on Ethernet. We talked we talked about client server, where a good example would be your PC might be a client, and out on the web we have a server, and then we perform this communications between the client and the server, and the server back to client, which led us to the discussion of how does it find a PC internally on a network. Okay, we talked about the edge and how does it find it. Well, that led us to try to distinguish, and I'll come back to this picture here in a little bit. We have the physical address or the MAC address that identifies the PC. We have a more logical address which is assigned to the PC we have this match between the MAC and the logical address. And then somewhere in there is a port number to keep track of what we're doing. If we are running PuTTY or if we're using a browser or what we're using so we have different ports. Then we have the actual data. If you can believe that inside them. So they call this encapsulation where we take and we take some information, encapsulate it with some more information, and encapsulate it with even more information. And then we send it out. Okay. So we're going to talk a little more about that as we go along here. There were some questions about what a hub is. I'm not going to go into that right now. It's uh, It has become almost irrelevant. You see a few hubs around, but um, they'll be easier to describe once we talk about things like a broadcast. You know, a message that sends out to everybody compared to a unicast which is meant for one location. You see that a lot in the client server. The client wants to communicate with one particular server on the internet and that server communicates back. That's a unicast. Since I have it here, peer-to-peer -peer is where one PC communicates to another peer and that one communicates back. And You can do that without a server. I think a TORS would be an example of doing that. So a switch, though, a switch keeps track of devices that are connected to it with a physical address, which we call a media access control address. So that's how a switch, if we were to look at this here, that's how this switch can identify that PC or this access point can identify this phone different from the laptop. 
You can do that by the physical address. Now, to move things th through, like the uh, internet, we've got to be able to determine the path, so we need IP addresses. Okay. So we have internally, we have private addresses, and then we have network address translation, believes it or not, and converts them into public addresses we can use out on the internet. We don't want to get into that too much further. Now, a little terminology where Nyack connects to Charles City, that would be considered a WAN, wide area network. Internally, this would be a local area network, small geographical area under the supervision of a particular organization. A WAN not always, but often has a service provider, could be the internet, or it could be just a service provider that makes that connection. All right, here's a big picture. We'll talk a little bit about this. <clears throat> so in order to understand how, let's just say, this PC can go out, okay, and end up at a website, how can that website get back? Well, the PC, let's say it's a browser, and it uses a URL. Well, eventually, figures out that that's port either 80 or 443. This is secured, not secured, encrypted, not encrypted. Then it puts an IP address on it, where it's going. Some IP here. It's that from DNS, the URL checks with domain name services and gets the IP. Okay? So that's a destination IP. You can put a uh, MAC address on to get it out of the local network, so to speak. That's not exactly, but so to speak. And it moves across to either wire, fiber, or in the air, Wi-Fi. So then it gets here and looks at their IP addresses to see if it stays or if it goes out. If it doesn't know the IP address, where it is, sends it out in the Internet. Well, the Internet has all those public addresses, so it can move the traffic however it might want to move it. It can get it to the right ISP. Literally, that ISP sends it into the network, and then the local area network here will find that server based on two things, the IP address, then eventually the MAC address. Then it switches the IPs around and sends it back. So it's kind of like it goes down this, okay, and then goes back up when it gets the other end, and then goes down it again, and then goes back up when it gets the other end. We don't want to go into it any further than that right now. This is called the OSI model. Out here in the internet would be routers. And what they do is they look at the IP address and they have in them already routes that would be the best way to get somewhere. And there's multiple ways to go. So if one way isn't very good, you can take another way. Okay get the traffic to the ISPs. The ISPs manage the IP addresses. American Registry of the Internet Interchange, whatever that is. Aaron, you can look that up. But it's Aaron.net and that's North America where they manage the IP addresses. And then they're managed worldwide also. There's four or five of these provide um, nonprofits that manage the IP addresses. <clears throat> okay? The OSI model are these layers, and so when we say a multi-layered switch, that means that's a switch that actually kind of works at all three of these layers. A layer two switch just deals with the MAC addresses. So we talk about those internal devices. So, here's the big picture. So, if we were to 
go through this briefly. If you putty and you type in some IP number you want to go to, it comes down and if you're using putty, it's going to use port 22. Port, the data is the IP address or whatever, where you want to go in there. Actually, that ends up over here. And this is you want to access a server here. So then it gets an IP address on it. Destination IP. And then it'll get a MAC address that will get it out of the local area network. So if you're at home and you're puttying into a server over here, you'll have that public address. And the MAC address, it'll look to see if you're trying to communicate locally. And if MAC address isn't there, it's going to send it to your little router, which will get rid of the MAC address and then send it to the ISP. When it comes back, your router will put the MAC address back on it so it gets to the right device at your house, assuming you have mobile devices. Once it hits the internet, it uses the public address, push it through, goes to the ICN, because nobody else has that 207-165-226-185, let's say you're going to that server. When it comes in here, this routes it, it knows it goes this way and not this way. And eventually it hits this routing device, which sends it to the switch. When it sends it to the switch, it puts on the right MAC address. So when it hits the switch, it goes to the right PC, or in our case, to the right server. Then that server reverses it, sends it all back. Crazy. Does it less than a second. We'll talk more about it. Each of the layers. So. What's really important now is don't get oh my gosh how much you know, we 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 have a, we have chapters that we talk about the physical layer the data link layer and network and transport layer and then we kind of lump those together at this point in your networking career that's it.